Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be talking about how to use PDF Stitcher and Inkscape to edit projector patterns to either unfold items that are cut on the fold, to figure out how much fabric you need for a certain project, or to grade between sizes. So if you're interested to see how I do that, keep on watching. So there are various ways that you can hook up your projector to your computer to cast the patterns over. Um, I use an Amazon Fire Stick. You can also use a Chromecast and things like that, or an HDMI cable to connect the projector directly to your computer. So for mine, I opened up the app for the Fire Stick on my phone and I told it to mirror. And now I'm gonna come over here on my computer click down here, select project, connect to a wireless display, then it'll pop up with some options up here, Shelby's Fire TV Stick, and now it is connected and it's mirroring my screen. So for mine, I actually have two monitors and it's mirroring my other monitor, so I'll just switch over to this one bring my icons back up. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up PDF Stitcher. And select the input I want. I'm going to do a couple different things today just to show what we're doing, but I am gonna be making a new bucket hat for my baby because he grew out of the other one. So I select the input, and then I'm gonna tell it how I wanna save the output. I'm just gonna overwrite this one that I made that says test, because I'm choosing a age one size. I've measured his head. So then I click over here on the layers tab, and I wanna unselect all the layers I'm not working with. So I don't want the grid overlays, I do want the pattern information. And then the reason I run it through PDF Stitcher first is so I can make the line thicker. So I'm just gonna change it to a four point generate. And now I have that. So when I open Inkscape, now I'm able to import And just say okay here, that's fine. Okay. So, the first thing I want to do is ungroup these items. So I'll do Control, Shift, G, and that ungroups the things. You can see here that it has ungrouped all of the writing, but it hasn't actually ungrouped the three pattern pieces. And that's just something that happens with some of the patterns it just depends on how it was um, created. So I'll show you with a different pattern how it works when it just ungroups them all, and then I'll show you a trick to duplicate this so that you can get these all as individual items. All right, so while this is all ungrouped, I'm going to select the one inch square, and I'm going to duplicate it a couple times by Control D, and again, then I can drag a square onto each onto each pattern piece because I find it helpful to have that. And then I'm going to delete extra stuff that I don't need projected just to clear up the space. So this here says two centimeters but it is attached to the one inch square so that's not a big deal to me but if I wanted to I could select the eraser tool and get rid of that. I'm not sure why it doesn't always work and it might like come back sometimes when you're erasing like that. I'm not sure I'm definitely not an expert here so I just keep doing it till it's gone. <laughs> 
It was painful to watch, I'm sure. There, that's good enough. And always reselect the arrow tool. So I'm going to move these away from this page thing just to have a clean workspace. So I want to be able to move all of these pattern pieces individually. So the way that I accomplish that is to clip it, like to crop them basically. So I need to put them back together, regroup them. So control G after they're all selected and then just double check it's all moving. Then I'm going to duplicate it twice because I need one set for each pattern piece, three total. So control D, control D. And for my first one, I'm going to take the hat side piece. So I'll use this square tool and I'll draw a rectangle around it. Then back to the arrow cursor. This is selected and I'm also going to shift and click this to select what it's coming from. Object, clip, set, and that is how you crop out an, a piece of the image. So now this is its own thing and it's not huge. So I'll do the same thing with this hat top. Use this square tool, take that, back to the arrow, shift, clip. Now I have just this. And finally I want the brim. So once again, that was a little too close, so I'll just do this. And of course it has a piece here, but whatever. And okay, great. I can use this to get rid of that. It actually worked this time, so that's great. And I'll just save now that I have this here. Okay, so all of this was just to have the pieces movable. And the reason you might want to do this is, let's say you only have a scrap piece of paper, and it doesn't really make sense to be doing this with something that only has three pieces because it's easy when you're projecting it to just move your fabric around and be able to cut it out easily. But let's say you have something with a whole bunch of pieces and you want to try to Tetris them together to have the least fabric waste or to be able to fit them all onto a, a small piece of fabric. So you can draw a box and then you tell it how big it is. So I'll do in inches. Let's say I have something that is 18 inches wide and 18 inches tall. So then I can drag my pieces on and really try to make the most out of the fabric that I have available. So after you're done playing with these and doing the Tetris and you're happy with how it is, you want to draw another box around the fabric box. and that makes it so that when you project it, it has this border and it's not right up on the edge. So it gives you more wiggle room to move this around on your cutting mat, for example. So another thing you can do is you can make a grid. So over here, grids, a new grid. I want to do the units in inches and I want the spacing to be 
one inch by one inch, just as an example. And this is helpful just to make sure that you've still got everything to scale. Sometimes I fret about that. So I can just move this and then see that my one inch square lines up. And it's an inch. So that's just a good way to help visualize sometimes and of course you can do different units and different size grid. Sometimes I'll do a 10 by 10 if I'm working with a big on a big project just to visualize things. And then when you're ready you can just save as a PDF and then it'll be uh, you know, something you can open in Adobe and project just like normal. Now I'm going to import a different, probably move the grid. Now I'm going to import a different file just to show how to do some other changes with the tools you have available here. So I'm going to import the Amber Singlet which I've already run through PDF Stitcher and chosen a size and made the lines thicker. So same thing as before, I have it selected Control Shift G to ungroup. This one actually did ungroup more. So let's say this pattern piece wasn't already unfolded for us. I could take the half and then Control D to duplicate and then I could click H and that um, flips that duplication horizontally so I can move it over here and now I've unfolded that piece and then you could draw a line to show the uh, fold line that was there before And yeah, so then of course you would want to regroup these. And of course sometimes it's really low that you have this box went all the way down there. So you have to make sure you drag the box really big or you can do shift and click. So I'll do control G. Now these are all grouped together and they can move around like this. Another important tool that I use often is to rotate 90 degrees. So you can do that here, or you can use the shortcut control bracket. And you can see here is the H to flip horizontally, V flips vertically. And that is for when you're laying things out on your rectangle that represents your fabric to, you know, have everything on the proper grain line and matched up. So if I do control bracket, it flips again, 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 back to normal. And then just once again, V flips it on the vertical axis and H won't show anything right now because it's duplicated. All it shows is that the line I drew is not straight. So I could have uh, just dragged this over, would have been better than drawing my own line. You can see it was not straight. So yeah, that is how I use Inkscape to mess with pattern pieces. And you can also do this with A0 or copy shop files. They don't have to be projector files. And you can also use PDF Stitcher to piece together A4 or letter patterns and uh, not have to do the whole print and tape and cut thing. And there's other tutorials on YouTube how to do that. I have never done that, but I know it's possible. Um, another thing that you can do with Inkscape is you can grade between sizes. So you can use the line tool to draw the 
space or to connect the parts that you're grading and then you can make this darker. So, um, you know, by telling it I want it to be way bigger, then it'll show up on the projection and you can just really easily see how you want to connect the different sizes for grading. You don't have to do that. You can also just project the two sizes and look on your cutting mat. But for me, this is easier because then I'm sure of where I'm cutting. All right, well, thank you for watching. If you made it this far, I hope you found this video helpful. I know it was uh, kind of a mess there and I definitely don't know how to use all the tools in Inkscape or PDF Stitcher, but uh, I watched several videos when I was figuring it out and I just wanted to kind of combine those different things into one video to help make it a little easier and give you a jumping off point. I love my projector and I would never go back now to the paper patterns. So happy sewing.